All right, so uh, we've spent most of the day um, touching uh, this concept of getting our project out from, you know, last month, which it was a basic web app, and now it's getting closer to being a real app. Technically, just dropping it in here like this, it's an app. And notice we had to do a little bit of roughing off the edges because now we've got this in-app browser. Some of you have seen that if you do taco browser or taco run browser, it doesn't quite want to work. And that's because there's another topic there to deal with that the web browser is sort of being way more protective and not letting external websites open. Um, short answer is because what's going on is this on your index file at the very top we have this that says content security policy. We won't have time to talk about it just yet right now, but this line 5, the CSP, is basically your whitelist that allows things or disallows things. And you can go to contentsecuritypolicy.com to read all about it, but this is saying allow stuff from this website, and we didn't specify any other website. So if yours is not letting you load it, it's because we did not specify any website beside gstatic.com. It's not letting anything else other things happen, you know, media sources or, or CSS sources. It's not specifying what you can do, so it's very locked down. For most of you, it doesn't matter because you're running it on a real device or virtual. But if you're running it in the browser, it might not quite behave. We'll talk about that a little later, and you can look at contentsecuritypolicy.com. Um, what we managed to do was to make a button work. And the way we did it for this amount of effort is because now, anything, any new button that we create, if we follow this sort of syntax, it will open a brand new window. Just for practice, let's make a brand new button, make it open a brand new website, and we're basically going to reuse this code. Let's go back to the HTML file. Remember our HTML file here is where we can create the visuals of the project. I want to create a brand new button. I want to create a brand new button on the home screen. We'll delete it later, but I want a new button on the home screen, so we'll edit the HTML file, and we'll find a spot right below the, the little info button. And let's see, that is line... We'll go to line um, 59. We've got a spot on line 59 where we can add a brand new button. So let's just type here, um, for just practice, YouTube. We're going to make a link to go to a YouTube page. The same idea that we've done before in that <coughs> this needs to have an A tag wrapped around it so that it can so that it can be turned into a button. All right, so we will write data role button. Data icon, um, I don't know, star. I don't have them all memorized, but this one that comes to mind at the moment, we'll put a star on that button. So we've seen that before. What's new is what we did a moment ago. We need to then encode the address into this object, data-url. Doesn't matter where we add it, but just for consistency like the other one, we will add it at the beginning, because that's usually where we have our href, isn't it? Uh, I guess except not on line 54, but ignore that. We'll do data-url equals quotes, and then we can put any web address here. So we can encode a URL, this bit of data URL, to any object. I'm encoding it, I'm adding it, I'm saving it to this, to this button. The address, whatever we want, any YouTube address. It's just a youtube.com, we can fix it later. And so, we've made a button, we've added an address to it, so that the JavaScript pays attention when we click on this button, there's our class. We can reuse class over and over. We can attach that class to anything, and it will trigger the get URL. So, just to be consistent, at the end of here, we've got data URL, data role, data icon. Now we'll add class. Make sure you're still inside of the A tag, class equals btn URL. 
Make sure it's spelled exactly the same as you used it before. Case sensitivity does matter. And be careful that here you do not put the dot, because that is the dot is represented by class. And that's it. We don't have to write anything else in the JavaScript. The JavaScript algorithm works. We have a generic way to do something. Any button that we click on, give me its address, load that address. The details come here. This is the address inside data URL. And this button knows to be clicked on because it's got that class that we can use over and over. The trick, of course, is spelling it right and everything. Button URL, BTN URL, class, data dash URL, put your web address, data roll button, data icon we've seen before. I'm going to save that. I'm going to run that in my emulator, Taco Emulate Android. And while that's coming up, again, the concept here, the algorithm, we are always in search of a way to do something smartly. I don't want to write a lot of code where I can misspell code, make a mistake. I want to see what can I invent, what kind of code can I write that I can reuse over and over. And as a beginner, that's very complicated to do because you're still learning it all. How do I make it smarter if I'm still kind of learning it? That takes practice, time, and effort. And I've shown you an example here where in the JavaScript, we've got this algorithm, a way of doing something. Anything that is called BTN URL, whenever it's clicked, give me the data of this, I mean, give me the properties, give me the attributes of this thing that I clicked on, and pass them into get URL. Get URL is defined here. With Cordova, I'm opening a browser. Which address? The address that's encoded into data-url with the rest of the options. So it loads it up, eventually, almost. And then I'm going to get a brand new button down here called YouTube. I click on it and it should open YouTube. We can be pretty advanced here. Later on when we get to the database we'll also use this to, to uh, perhaps encode some data into different elements. Um, then we can pull out as necessary. The whole point of JavaScript is the interactivity of things. Plain old HTML can show you something and it's static. If you want something to happen from user feedback, user interaction, there's JavaScript. Okay, so now I've got a brand new button, YouTube. Click on YouTube. YouTube. I didn't have to edit anything in the JavaScript. The algorithm works. It's accepting any address and doing what it needs to do with it. So once it worked one time, once your JavaScript worked one time, this little chunk right here I can reuse over and over by creating any new element, any new button, and attaching a data URL and the class so that it becomes active, so that it becomes aware that when something is clicked anywhere in the project, launch get URL. <clears throat> Can you show the, the link again? Yes, right here. It's a big line, but uh, data URL and uh, class. To do data roll button also? Oh, that's <laughs> data roll. <laughs> so we can make any 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 new buttons anywhere in our project, and this this will work. We can change any address. You know, I just simply put YouTube, but if you actually have a web address, you can put it in. So I'm going to recommend this one right here. If you would like j.m slash vmc finance. FYI, you don't have to do that, but you can load up any web address. And uh, this button or this code will know to load the address. <clears throat> What's going on is that if we go um, over to the web browser, let's do this. Open your, your web browser. Just 
open up any web browser and let's go to cordova.apache.org cordova.apache.org I'm going to be referencing this the more complex we get but here is the manual I gave you the here's here's the NAT browser use it but here we go to look it up what are the details what else can I do with it um, can I you know change the icons up on the browser can I put text up there what can I do all the documentation is here cordova.apache.org and remember taco also known as Cordova also known as phone gap so when you look things up and someone says here's how to do it in phone gap that's like 99 percent the same 99.9% .9 the same. So all of those are synonymous. Taco, Cordova, Phone Gap. Go to Documentation. Oh, they changed this recently. Scroll down. Oh, this is nice. Um, you'll see on the left plugins. Scroll down to find plugins. And let's go read about the in app browser. So on the left side over here, under Table of Contents, at the bottom, find Plugin APIs, and then uh, In App Browser. This plugin provides a web browser view that displays when calling cordova.inapp.open. That's what we did. Basic way it works right here. It's slightly different. They put it in a variable, don't worry. But it's still got Cordova In App Browser. And the basic example here is that they say, okay, type Cordova done it in that browser dot open and then a web address blank location. That's what we did. But this will only open one address, always Apache.org. We did a little bit extra to accept any address from any button. That is a smarter bit of code than this one. This one works, but then I have to go in and write another piece of code and call it something else to make Google and another piece of code with 99% the same code and change it to be Apple. But the way we did it with you know, variables and such and data.url is smarter because then we can reuse it. You can read all of this stuff here. What is it in detail? Um, it's giving further the example. Put it in your device ready. How to install it. We already did it. Cordova plugin add, blah, blah, blah. Uh, put it in your browser. This is the old code. This is the modern code. Okay, how does open work? And all the details. It needs an address, a target, options. So an address, target. We can do self, blank, and system. If we do want to open the user's built-in web browser for some reason, we can instead feed it system instead of blank. We have other options. Location, yes. We can do location, no. Turn the bar off. That bar at the top of the screen, don't show it. We can click. We can put no. But excuse me, by system, do you mean the Android system? The Android system, the iPhone system. Wherever our app loads into, it will open the web browser of their system instead of the one built into our app. Uh, for Android, we've got a couple of other things that we can do. We can do zoom, we can do hardware back, so that means that we can do something with that back button that's built into the, the Android. Clear the cache. For iPhone, close button caption. We can write some text. Uh, if you're loading your app on an iPhone, you'll have a button, and you can change it to say instead of done, you can make it say exit or you can do something else, but for iPhone only. For Windows, you can do these. And this works on all the platforms. This bit of code that we wrote will, should work on every platform. More examples. Quirks in Firefox, quirks in Windows, etc. So what I recommend over the weekend, there's a, remember there's no, uh, this class, there's no homework, there's no final project, there's no certificate, but I'm going to give you homework. You, over the weekend, go to this website, cordova.apache.org, and explore a little bit. Go to the documentation and explore. Maybe explore, how do I take a photo? We're going to do that together next time, but it'd be nice if you look here, get a little jump start on it. I'm going to put my code in the folder in just a moment. 
Uh, remember, I'm recording all of these videos. I'm going to upload them in a moment. If you haven't requested the videos yet, send me an email, and I'll send you the, uh, the links. So any general questions about anything we talked about today? Did everyone get a chance to sign in? Let the patient. All right, that's it for the moment. Uh, we'll have a little lab time. We'll do it again next week, and let me upload this stuff.